Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zentangle teacher. Welcome to day 29 of our Inktober series. So since today is 29, we only have today and two more left for the month. And I cannot believe we are almost done. So if you are new to this, please click on the link in the description of this video and it will take you to a packet from Stephanie Jennifer, a CZT, and she has a beautiful list of 31 tangles for us to try for the month of October. So that's what we have been working on. Each day I draw it on these little two inch by two inch bijou tiles available at zentangle.com. And then when I'm finished showing you how to draw it, I add it to this larger piece. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock. I'm using my Micron pen. This is a PN plastic nib pen. I have a little graphite pencil and a blending tool. All right, here we go. Let's move this out of the way. Look at how little space we have left. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay, so we have had a few challenging ones this month. If you have been following along for all of the first 28 days, you know that we have had some very tricky ones. We've also had some very nice, relaxing, easier ones. This is one of those easier ones to make, and I am so excited because tomorrow is what I think is the hardest one of the entire month. So um, if you get a chance to look up Narfello, N-A-R-F-E-L-L-O, you can start practicing before you even see my video tomorrow because it's, it's just kind of hard to get the hang of it. But um, we'll go through it very slowly and you'll get it. Okay, so for today we have CD Joy by Yuru Chen. Yuru Chen. And she, we have done her tangles before. She is amazing and creative. And um, I love her stuff. So this is CD Joy. All right, I'm going to flip my tile over. Zoom in a little. All right, I'm going to begin with my pencil. So this tangle is kind of a border tangle. It's done on a line. So I'm going to tip this at an angle and I'm going to do three lines. So I'm going to do one right through the center. You can do yours nice and light. I'll do mine a little bit darker. Then I'm going to divide the top in half and divide the bottom in half. It'll give us a couple different places to play with this one. Okay, you can pick up your pen. Now I'm gonna turn it so that these lines are vertical. And I'm going to start in the center. So C, D, Joy. So she begins with the letter C. So I'm gonna go right about here. I'm gonna go a little bit below um, that corner. And I'm going to make a nice round letter C. And it's about the size of the tip of one of my fingernails. And then if we imagine an uppercase or capital D, it has a straight line here, but then it has that belly coming out like this. So we have the C, then we have the D. Then we have the C, then the D. This is much like bugs that we did a few days ago, where we had these little bumps alternating sides of the line. C, D, and I'm gonna stop it before I get to the edge. And then I'm going to trace that center line, but not all the way to the corner, just to where I started that C and the D. Okay, 
Now, typically, if you were adding this to another piece, you would actually make that straight line first with your pen and then cross over. I did mine in pencil just so we could make sure we liked it and to make sure that we didn't trace all the way to the end. Okay, now we take our pen and we go right along this line here and we're gonna go and give this another little bump that's a little bit smaller. So we're doing an aura on the inside, but not down here. So this one, we start at the line and we bump up and come back to the line. We go inside this one, bump up, down to the line. And it's okay if your shapes are larger on some spots and smaller on others, the pattern still works. Okay, now we're going to ink in the smaller bumps. Enjoy this moment of just coloring things in. Okay, I love that we have those little bumps and I love that they have these little white auras around them. Okay, let me get a piece of scrap paper here. All right, so CD Joy, when she does it, is a line and then it has these little bumps. Like that. And then she puts two dots on the opposite side of each bump. And see how that looks like a smiley face? That's where like the joy comes in, I believe. So it's a little smiley face. And if you do this, which I think we'll do on here for one of our variations, and if you put in these little bumps and you do not color them in, they look even more like little smiley faces. And one of her variations, she does like two little round circles and they look like smiles, okay? On the center one, I'm gonna vary it a little bit and I'm going to put in three dots instead of two because I don't really want mine to look like faces in the middle. So I'm going to put one, two, three. And on this side, one, two, three. I love smiley faces, but I don't know. I just didn't want them on the big section here. So we'll do them on one of the smaller ones. Okay, once we get all those little dots in, then we're going to aura all of it. So I'm going to start up here. So I'm going to start on this line. I'm going to come over and go bump, bump, bump over the three dots. And then I'm going to jump over the big one. One, two, three. Over the big one. One, two, three. Over the big one. And then I'm just going to continue around if you can and do the other side.
If your aura needs to go off the edge of the tile, that's okay. What a pretty little border pattern. Isn't that so cute? Okay, let's do our other two lines. I'm going to put those in, but I'm not going to touch the edges of the paper. And for this one, I'm just going to do the same thing. I think I can fit about three. And over here I'll do, let's do the same thing. I think I'm going to do about three again. So C, D, C. That works pretty good. All right, on this one I'm going to give the aura of the bump part. And then I'm going to give the two dots that kind of look like eyes. And then I'm going to aura it. Little bump, little bump, which I think then makes it look like a frog. Here we've got that one. And over here, I'm going to give the little auras. And then maybe inside these bumps, we can add some stripes. Now it looks like DNA, doesn't it? Like a DNA strand. And over here, instead of the two bumps or the three, let's do two, one, two, and then put one out here. One, two. You can do whatever you want on this one. We're just kind of playing with different ideas. And then I'm going to Aura. Those look kind of like little cupcakes. All right, look at all those variations. So much fun. I'm going to initial it down here and add a bit of shading. So to shade these, I'm going to put a little bit of graphite underneath the bumps on the side of the little dots. I want to go all the way to the ends. And I'm going to push it up and out on that side and then this side. Very cool. And on here, I'm going to put it right on that center line. And I'm going to push it out on both sides. This one, let's put it just underneath those little lines. We're just doing it three different ways to see what we like. That's kind of cute as well. 
You can always take your blending tool. It's got a little bit of graphite on it. And you can put a little bit on the outside if you'd like. That's kind of fun too. All right, there we go. There is our CD Joy. Let's add it to our larger piece. Okay, I feel like it gets more stressful as we get to the end because now we just have three to fit in here and um, figuring out where those go is not always easy. All right, so I've got the little bugs which look very similar, so I don't know if I want it right by there. Trying to decide. I feel like I want it here. Like I feel like I want to put a couple of strands this way. You could always just do one big strand and you could just kind of, you know, wind it through the middle. Do I have our last two tangles here? I don't think I have them at my desk with me. Oh, I do, I do. So every day has been a surprise. I have not shown you ahead of time, but for planning purposes, I'm gonna show you. Okay, so we had Flouder, and now we have um, CD Joy. Our next one, which is, I think, the single hardest tangle I've ever done in my life. <laughs> I'm exaggerating a little bit, but it's tough. Is this Narfello Hearts? And then we have Swarm. Swarm is so relaxing, so easy to do, and that will be a great filler. So I want you to think about putting in the CD Joy, something that looks similar to this. It might not turn out exactly, but kind of a big wide border one. And then Swarm will just kind of fill in. Okay, so I'm thinking that that tricky one will go like right here or here. So I'm going to put these over here, figure out where to put the tricky one tomorrow, and wherever I don't use it, I will do swarm. Okay, that's my plan. So I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to do one here, here, here. Try and oh, I'm sorry, you probably can't see that. I'll go a little bit darker. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to take my pen, I'm going to ink over those lines because I do like where they're at. And now we put in our C's and our D's. Mine are going to be more like a smile and then a big frown and then a smile. But if you want to turn your paper to make it do a C and a D, you can. I'm going to start with a large one down here, and I'm going to start in a space that I know is open. So I'm going to go up, down, up, down. And don't go too tiny. So this whole thing is about the width of my finger. It's pretty big. Over here, I just went to the end, and then I just let it kind of tuck in behind the frame. Over here, I would do a down and an up, and that's all I would see. So similar to bugs, on my next one, I want to sort of match up my bumps. So I want, if I have a down bump right here, I want there to be a down bump here so it doesn't hit this one. So I'm gonna do my down bump first, and then I'm gonna go up and see how that mimics this one. And then I go down and up and down. So basically I'm auraing that wiggly line. This would go up. 
and down. Okay, I'm going to do this next one. So this one is down, so I want a down one here. And then up, and then a down, and then up. I'm going to put those little inside auras in every bump. This is very calming, very relaxing. So I think I'm going to do all of mine the same just for consistency. And I'm going to do this middle one where I have those dark areas and then the three dots. That's what I'm going to do. So right now I'm going to spend a couple of minutes inking in these little bumps. I love that drama, that darkness against the light. So someone asked a question recently about why I use the PN, the plastic nib pen, instead of like a, a thinner point. And, um, I wasn't exactly sure at first, like I just have really grown to like it. I think initially this pen was the most consistent of my pens. And for working on a video, I really needed it not to bend. So like the regular Microns have a very um, fragile tip. It makes the most delicate, beautiful lines but that tip can bend. And um, when I'm working on a video, I don't want it to bend. I also don't want to have to push very hard to get a dark line for you to see. So this PN can make really dark kind of bold lines. Then the other day I was doing watercolor with Audrey Shant's art. I highly recommend her and she uses a thick brush, a number 10, I don't know if it's a number 10, it's a 10 brush, and it is wide, it is large, and she does it for everything, even her smallest, thinnest lines, and it's because she can just go to the very tip and go very lightly and make a thin line, or she can go on the side and make a thick line, and I realize that that is so similar to my Micron PN that I can make a very thin, delicate line or I can tip it to the side, push down a little bit harder and I can get the thickness. So that's my answer. That's why I like the plastic nib ones. They just don't break as easily. I don't know. I love them. Okay. I thought I'd talk for a moment while we colored. I love how this is looking just like by itself like that. It looks like a really cool pattern. Okay, now I'm going to add three dots. If you want to do two or you want to do something else, please do what you would like. Okay, 
I just realized that I need to aura these and they're really close together. I'm not sure how that's going to go. I did not even think about that. We'll make it work. Somehow or another, I'll make it work. All of my little dots in. Check out those ends. See, make sure you know you don't need another dot or two on the ends. I didn't mention, but you could, of course, do yours like this and um, aura the ends to bring it all together and just have it more like a floating tangle. It doesn't have to touch two other tangles. It could just kind of be a shape by itself. All right, I'm going to try to aura. I'm going to aura really close because these ones that are together are going to be aurad so tight. So here's what I'm realizing. My auras are already touching the other bumps. So if you wanna watch for a moment, I'm going to aura. And if I get to a point where I can't aura, I'm just going to let my aura stop, come out the other side. And then it looks like I did that on purpose. So aura, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a good little tip, right? <laughs> you guys wanted to learn that tonight. I think that looks pretty amazing, and I don't even mind that my auras are touching. And I could go in and I could ink in the space in between, but I think I'm just going to leave it right now. What do you guys think? Should I leave it? Should I ink it in? Should I add some striping back there in these little spots? Oh, decisions, decisions. Hmm. I don't want to ink it in because it's so uneven. I think I'm just going to add some striping back there. Sometimes I just have to do it and not think so much about it. Giving it some little, I'm trying to go horizontal with, you know, the direction of my paper. And if you have a large spot, my spot up here was really small. If you have a large spot, add a circle, aura it, then put in the stripes. Okay, that looks more purposeful to me. I think I like it. Let's do some shading. All right, since I made all of these the same, I'm going to shade the dotted side. So I'm just putting a little bit of graphite underneath those little polka dots. And when I do that, I'm going all the way to that black bump. So I'm crossing over even that little white aura area.
Okay, let's use our blending tool to push that up into those dots just slightly, creating that cute little shadow. Okay, have those done. I'm gonna do something very tedious, but I am going to go over the outside aura of each of these. That's such a tiny little detail, but then it kind of pushes those little lined areas to the back. I barely have to touch these, but I'm just going to move it a little bit. Okay. I go so fast. I'm so sorry. All right. Now I have um, some other places to shade where this new tangle tucks underneath other tangles or the outside frame. So right here, I'm gonna go all the way. I think this is called Worthwhile. And it goes all the way over it. So I'm gonna put graphite there. Put graphite around this one. And then the edge over here needs some. Okay. under my zigzag of worthwhile. I think we did it. You just never know. You never know what something's going to look like. And look at how cool that turned out. I'm gonna zoom out, see what you think. I hope you love yours. And look at that, we've got spots for two more tangles. So now that we're at the end, um, I just wanna to talk to you a little bit. Some of you have been sharing on my Facebook page called Let's Tangle. And some of you have yours pretty much full and are starting a new piece. Some of you have a lot of room left. So let me just tell you, if you are getting to the very, very end, you hardly have room, just make your last couple really tiny. It won't matter. If you have a lot of room, make your last two kind of big, but then you can go back and pick one of your favorites or two of your favorites, and you can use those to fill in any large spots that you have, okay? And I'll show you in the next two days as I add the last two tangles how I kind of complete my space. But again, this was not like a planned piece. I didn't know where things were going to go, but um, it's working out pretty well. So I hope you love yours. Again, follow me on Let's Tangle, share your work, and we'll see you for the next two days. Thank you. Bye-bye.